Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish, stepping out of the Red Elevator, wearing a little bit of pink and red today to talk to you about what everyone's been asking me and has been dying to hear about, which is residential flooring. That's right, we are going to dissect it today on the Red Elevator. <laughs> Since so many of you asked me, today I am wearing a dress by Alice and Olivia, which has a beautiful shimmer to it and lots of vivid colors. My shoes are Celine and I purchased them on the Real Real, and they are a few seasons old, but what I love about them is that they're platform and platform is back. So many people have been commenting on residential flooring lately and asking me what they should use. And today we are gonna go over some of the basics. Again, I'm gonna be completely honest with my opinion. This is just my opinion. So if you don't agree, that's okay. I am here to be supportive and loving of all of your flooring choices. Before we begin, I'm gonna ask you guys kindly to please subscribe to my channel. This is very, very helpful. It'll just take one quick second. If you push that button, then you can also get alerted when new videos are out. The first flooring we're gonna discuss is Flagstone. I have a love-hate relationship with Flagstone. I don't like it in the exterior of a house. I find it to be very dated, but I found a new application for Flagstone that I did wanna share with you. Using light-colored Flagstone, like the ones you see in this photograph that almost look white, with gray grout looks very new and fresh to me. And especially in a home that's maybe in a desert or in hot spaces, in a warm climate, I think really has a very fun effect. Another great application for flagstone is as a backsplash. This is very new, this is trending right now, and a lot of people are using natural materials in their homes. And why not use flagstone in a place that you would normally not expect it to be? That is how I like flagstone to be shown unexpectedly in places that are different. The benefits of flagstone are that it is actually a natural material which a lot of people love. But besides that, it is very easy to maintain and upkeep. It hardly scratches, it hardly wears, you never really have to seal it. So if you want a very easy, uh, low maintenance item, low maintenance flooring backsplash, and you wanna do something that's a bit rustic and easy on uh, the budget, this is where you are going to really enjoy Flatstone. My next favorite flooring, which I know you guys are waiting for and you know I was gonna bring up is Herringbone Chevron flooring. Now, these are two very traditional patterns that I love and I always use in all of my residences. I don't mean my personal residences, I mean my clients' residences, and they look incredible. So let's talk about the difference between Herringbone and Chevron. Chevron tends to be exactly pointy and what looks like a long string of arrows. It is very much old school. You will see it in Parisian apartments. And I would say between Chevron and Herringbone, they are equally as um, prevalent in Parisian apartments in their wood flooring. Herringbone is very much similar to the Chevron pattern. However, it is a little bit more staggered. You'll see about a three or four inch staggering at the end of the plank. It is a very formal look, but uh, you have probably seen this quite a bit recently, and it is something that is very, very hot, but also very, very classic. Take a look at this kitchen. Here they have applied what is herringbone hardwood floors, which in a beautiful warm tone, this is a great application of this hardwood floor and great for a, as you can see, a classic residence. As you can see in this next photo, with the bronze bar in a New York apartment, the floors are also herringbone, but this is more of a modern transitional residence and the flooring is more of a white oak. Again, you can use herringbone in all kinds of finishes depending on the mood you're trying to evoke. In this next apartment that you see, this is also in New York by designer and a very famous cook, Athena Calderon. Here she has the white oak floors that I love and have also utilized in many projects. Again, you can definitely warm this up with rust tones and neutral tones and it is a great color and can patina over time and really still look incredible. In this very next photo, you are going to find an incredible dining room that I absolutely love. And here we are using the Chevron hardwood floors, which again are juxtaposed by an incredibly hand-painted 
chinoiserie wallpaper. This is probably my favorite application, my favorite combination. You will see this in a lot of my projects, but I just love the application of this kind of flooring with what is a formal wallpaper. My very last example is a really good one. It's by designer Kelly Wurstler that you guys know I really love. And what she has done is in a pool house, she has combined dark and light flooring, what almost looks like it's painted, but it's a very dark stain and a patina that creates a pattern, a black and white pattern. I often say not to do patterns because you will get sick of them, but in this case, it's fun. It's a pool house. It's not something she's in every day, and it really just elevates the look. The next flooring I wanted to discuss with you guys, which is new and fresh and the whole reason behind this channel, honestly, is to give you guys information that would be difficult to find unless you spend a lot of time digging. So I hope that you're able to use this information. And the next flooring that I'm really into at this moment is epoxy flooring. That's right, you heard me, epoxy is no longer for garages, warehouses, and hospitals. It is now for your residence. What's great about epoxy is the fact that it has a beautiful, reflective, shiny, sort of um, surface, which Ralph Pucci, who is a very famous um, furniture maker, has even used in many of his projects. Epoxy also happens to be very uncluttered, deliberate, durable. This is a flooring that can take a lot of beating, people. So if you have kids and you like a very clean, uncluttered look, you definitely want to try epoxy. In this particular photo, you can see the epoxy application that goes from the kitchen all the way into the formal, or I should say informal, uh, dining room. This is an entire floor of the house that has been treated with epoxy. And remember, epoxy can come in all kinds of colors. It can come in all kinds of um, patterns, meaning you can have little little bits in there and it can come in all kinds of finishes, whether you want it to be glossy or matte. I would definitely choose a matte finish and I do recommend using it in a very large space as well. The last flooring option I will touch upon is tile, of course. I'm sure this is um, not a surprise, but tile can come in various forms. You can have marble tiles and you can have man-made tiles. And in my opinion, Real natural tiles are always best if you can get away with them, but they are also more costly. Porcelain tiles are actually very great for areas of high transit, and because they do not absorb a lot of water, porcelain is an excellent choice for places like your kitchen or in any of your bathrooms. I have to admit, marble tiles are by far my favorite, so I had to share with you my favorite tiles of all time. And if your budget can take it, I would do it certainly in an entrance which is the first point of reference when someone comes into your home and really sets the mood. In an entrance, I would definitely use real stone. I have in my home, as you guys can see in these images and in this video, black and white, 12 by 12 tiles. One is a white Tassos and the other is a 12 by 12 black absolute granite. So these two tiles have actually worn pretty well. We're careful with them. You can get them in a hone finish, which I love, or you can get them in polished. In my kitchen, I also have striped black and white, same idea, but instead I have Carrera and I also have Black Absolute. And I picked this pattern just to make my kitchen a lot more whimsical. Also in this kitchen that you see here in Architectural Digest, there is also that vertical placement of black and white, which was done purposely and in a way that is really modern, geometric, and fun. In this other kitchen that you see, there is use of terracotta tiles, which I absolutely think is incredible. I love terracotta, especially these days with all of the natural fabrics and furniture that is being released left and right all over the place. So trying to find flooring for that kind of living and that kind of sort of rustic home, terracotta lends itself beautifully, especially if you have terracotta tiles, Spanish tiles on your roof, terracotta flooring indoor and outdoor is a great way to go about choosing your flooring. The next type of tile that I use in projects that need a lot of history would be a ceramic tile. Ceramic tiles tend to have a lot more texture to them, a lot more pattern. They tend to weather a little bit more, but they are really beautiful 
and if you look at this Neapolitan pattern majolica tile, you will see that it really exudes an old world sense of style and design, and it really can bring a room together. It's a great way to introduce pattern into a room that um, otherwise would be quite bland. Lastly, I want to share with you this bathroom that has hex tiles on the floor. These can also be a penny patterned tile. They look great in bathrooms. They look great and are really timeless. If you're at a loss as to what to do in a bathroom, pick a hex, pick a penny, make sure it's about an inch, and then you can actually change the pattern and do something entirely different. That's what's great about tile is that you can mix and match them as you can see in these two bathrooms. Go ahead and mix and match your tiles. Tiles are affordable if you buy them in porcelain and you can certainly get an elevated look with your tiling choices. I wanted to thank everyone for joining me today on this episode of Flooring. And I can't wait to see you guys again next week on this channel. Do let me know what you wanna hear about next. I only wanna give you content that you guys are thirsty for and you love. Love you guys and we'll see each other again here on the Red Elevator next Sunday.